specialists. So, um, yesterday's class, oh, well, this is Tail Teller Club, by the way. Please go and sign up um, and you can see all the classes. They're all free if you're a, a subscriber. Um, so yesterday we, we talked about the names of the notes and we now know, hopefully, that we've got a C, a G, a D and an A, okay? And when you first start playing cello, you would, I, I would recommend that you familiarise yourself, yourselves with those notes and that, um, well, let, I'll tell you what, let's play a little game, shall we? And we'll do this with uh, your thumb or your forefinger, depending on which you're more comfortable with. It really doesn't matter for this game. Um, and then we'll do it with a bow, okay? So, play me an A. Very good. Did you get it right? Play me a C. The tip blue C, the one near my ear. Well done, very good. Play me a D. Very good, did you get it right? Play me a G. I think I played that too fast, didn't I? Play me an A. Play me a C. Play me a G. Play me a D. How did you get on? It's fun, isn't it? It's quite fun. So let's do it with a bow. So I think we'll have, um, should we do the bow hold now? I, I mean, I'll do separate broadcasts about the bow as well. But if you hold the bow at its centre of gravity, not, not you'll notice that the centre of gravity is, um, if you hold it like that rather, um, because you don't want you dropping it, or, or, or maybe hold it like that with two fingers. It's quite hard with one to get the absolute centre. Um, and you'll notice it's not actually as, as you might be tempted to think in the middle. And that's because of the weight of the frog. It's quite quite hef hefty. And I suspect that different bows have a different um, centre of gravity, but that they're all fairly, fairly similar. Um, they, they need to be fairly similar, I think, really, to, to um, for, for consistency purposes. Um, so what that means actually is when when you put it on the bow, that that centre of gravity is the easiest um, uh, position, if you like. It's it's it it's the easiest to make a sound, and you don't need to tense anything up. So if you just um, let's let's just have a little a little play around, shall we? And you can hold the bow up there for for the moment. I'm going to move my. I've got a, a laptop here. It's rather. Uh, previously, sorry about the noise, uh, getting in my way. Let's try and shove that away. Look, there we go, that's better, isn't it? Um, and maybe if I pop this down just a tad, is that better? I think so. So, when you're uh, uh, round about your centre of gravity, um, there's not, not too much you have to think about. You know, nearer the frog, there's oh, that you'll notice immediately that oh, it's still getting in the way. Um, that you have to do a lot of uh, um, engaging of you know various muscles uh, in your hands. Things have to sort of twist around. You need to bring parts of your body up. Do you see? And that's because. We're not used to it, and it feels quite strange. Let's try the tip. Let's go here. Now, you'll, the only way you're going to make a good sound is to, I call it filling the orb. So if I, let me just move that a titchy bit. If you think of your body and your performance area as, as a, a large, um, a, like a bit like can you see my globe over there? No, you can't. A bit like a globe. So, and and you're going to be asked in my classes to really utilise all this globe global space. Not and not do this. That's really you're not going to get. It's going to be really 
Look, if I try and do that, that's no good. I just get that right up to make a really beautiful, pretty sound. Do you see? And I'm, and then I'm, I'm actually also as I come out, I'm, it's like I'm like a dancer, dollies. Look, and I'm, I'm not doing this. I'm doing this. I'm stretching as far as you know, and my wrist is. My wrist, look, look what's happening. There's really interesting things happening. So I'm going actually from here to here. I mean, it's just magnificent, isn't it? Absolutely magnificent. And here, down to here, up to here, and round. And as I come down here later on, you'll be with me, I hope, on our journey. I, I'm coming forward and I'm filling the orb, the orbital space, this way as well. Don't be scared. Don't be scared to take up room. You need to learn as a cellist. It's one of our things in the orchestra. We take up a lot of space. So we need, if we, we, you know, we don't want to be sitting next to anybody too closely there because we're going to hit them with our bow. And this side, you think, no, that's fine. But it's not because you're going to come out like this, darling. Where there are some pieces that require you to make this huge a sort of triangular shape and you, you can't have people sitting close to you and you can't have things sitting close to you and I made a mistake there today because I I put my my um, other music table too close and when you know there's something close what it psychologically you know it's there and human beings are trained to not hit people and things and when you know there's something there there's a chair here for me today so tomorrow I'm going to have to move everything because I want to teach you properly how to do it all. And because my subconscious knows that there's a chair there, um, and I don't want to break my bow, of course, because it, my bow is very expensive and precious to me, um, I'm trying to sort of avoid hitting it. And that's not good for my music either. Now, you know, when you're playing a, a, a sort of boring bit and you're using this sort of middle area, it, it's not such a problem, is it? So, um, anyway down again <clears throat> so I'm going to uh, let's play the game um, and then we'll have a little chat about uh, the Suzuki so hold your bow as if there's a somebody living in in that space can you see I'm not doing this I'm not doing this I'm not doing that Having said that, if that's the only way you can play for the moment, I'm not going to tell you not to do it. I'm going to let you do that. But I'd prefer you to do this. But we can, we've got lots of time, lots and lots of time in front of us. And I've got some exercises that we can do in other broadcasts that will help you understand how to hold it. And the other thing you can do is you can you can buy a, a, a sort of rubber mould thing that, that helps you uh, hold it in the correct position. And it's got um, finger dents where you put all your fingers. And that's, I've heard really good reports of that. And the other thing, <laughs> another thing we can do is we can start from here. Because when the bow's a bit lighter for us and we're nearer the centre of gravity, <laughs> We, we can find it much easier on our hands. Now what you want to think about is keeping that thumb bent as much as you can. Look, you're not going to, you know, be struck by lightning if it goes straight. But later on, you will find that not bending that thumb gives you arthritis. So we want to start as we mean to go on. So when your thumb is here, tucked into this little U shape, give it a little bend as well while you're there okay a little bend and then you can use these two to support on this area here your pinky can go in front or on top it would never go behind and sometimes I play with it on the top when I'm doing certain pieces certain passages um, but generally most people would find it is sort of in front but it's it's got a lot of work to do look I'm just doing that with my pinky Nothing else. Look, all of my other, well, my thumb. My thumb and the pinky. If you if you let go of everything, your thumb and your pinky are quite, 
quite in control. We see. Um, anyway, so you've got your bow, and I'll do another class about how to sit. Um, some pieces I turn it quite into myself, especially if I'm working down here. Um, and you will find also that sometimes you're doing quite a bit of this. And especially if you're in a, a rock band or, you know, playing blues or jazz um, and, uh, you know, everything's quite percussive, you'll find that you want uh, quite a lot of movement. Um, and that's absolutely fine as well. Don't Try not to be too rigid. But what you don't want to happen is you do, when you let go, you don't want it to fall off or down. Um, you want it to be... Uh, and you're not squeezing it either it's just resting um i've got my spike in a, a special um thing which keeps it which gives it a little bit of an acoustic actually so you might you might think oh her, why does her cello sound sort of more intense or louder and that might be something to do with it but also i've got a concrete floor in here so you know all this sound is um beautifully uh, um, acu the acoustic is, is quite something else. It's, it's a, not particularly good to record in um, because you know you can't contain it and, and that's rather difficult. Anyway, I'm waffling. So we've got our bow and now we're going to play our game. So let's play an A. <laughs> Let's play a C. Let's play an A. Let's play a D. And let's play another D. G, yes, it's coming. Let's play a D. Uh, 